Assalamu alaikum to you all. Uh, welcome to lab number nine, which is on binary heaps. As usual, the objective is to learn not only how to use uh, binary heap in this case, but also how to implement it. I believe we have seen most of the implementation in the lecture, the recorded lecture already, but we shall still review some of it. Uh, so here you are giving us examples the implementation of the min heap class uh, which implement a binary min heap as a priority queue uh, meaning it has method for nq, dq and find front uh, of course this nq and dq will be done based on priorities of the element being nq it also implement methods for building a heap uh, using the two main approaches, either top-down or button-up. Okay, uh, let's go and see this menu here before we look at the rest of the classes. Um, so this is a main heap class. I believe you have seen most of it from the uh, lectures. Uh, so it, it requires that the elements being enqueued must be comparable, obviously, because as we as we learned, the elements in a heap are enqueued according to their priority. Uh, so the if in, in the case of many heap, the parent must always be less than or equal to the children. So for us to ensure we we have the ordering property of the of the min heap, the elements must be comparable. Uh, it implements the priority interface, which we already saw. It has the three methods: nq, dq, and find front. Okay. So this is the variable which we will use as we learned. The heap is not really a link structure rather it is an array so we have opted to use array list rather than the normal array uh, this is to, to allow the system to extend the size if needed because as you recall if you use a normal array then you as a programmer have to worry about um, when the array is full you have to uh, resize it by creating a new array and copying the data to the bigger array but if you use array list, we know internally it is an array, so it has all the uh, direct access efficiency that we know of array. But Java take the issue of re resizing away from you as the programmer. So if the if the list if the array become full, the system will automatically extend it for you. This is the main reason for using array list rather than normal array otherwise we could have used array as well <coughs> okay we discussed this constructor basically all it does is it it creates this array list so after calling the constructor we will have an array list which is empty no data has yet been entered um, so once that is done uh, you can go ahead and be calling the nq and the q methods okay we already explained what the nq will do it will put the element at the very end of the array list but it will calculate the element up to make sure it reaches its correct position based on its priority okay and of course we saw that the nq relies on <coughs> calculate uh, up which, which uh, uh, we also explain in the lecture. Essentially, it will be comparing with the parent. If the element being inserted uh, turns out to be smaller than the parent, then the parent has to be brought down and the element uh, will be taken up. Uh, there's no need for me to repeat the explanation of all the methods. I already explained all of them in the lecture. 
If you still have doubt, please uh, refer to the lecture again for more explanation. But it's doing the percolate up exactly as we described. Uh, similarly, for the <clears throat> for the DQ, okay. After taking care of the trivial cases, when the heap is empty, they are starting to DQ, or when there is only one element, there is no need for any percolate down. Just remove the element, and the queue becomes empty. Okay, we go to the real, uh, typical uh, situation where the queue already has some elements. So in that case, to delete an element, first you extract it, save it in a variable, then re uh, replace it, rather remove, remove the last leaf. Okay, the, the last leaf because we are extracting the element at heap dot size minus one, so it is the last element. Remove it from the heap, save it in a variable. Now. Uh, replace the root with this last element uh, root because we are putting at index 0 heap dot set at index 0 last item so the last item that we just removed from the heap uh, replace the root with it we are not losing the root of course because we have already saved it here now calculate down starting from the root this is exactly what we learn about the queue we copy the last element, put it at the root, and then percolate down. Okay, uh, so those are the main uh, methods. Of course, the percolate down method was also explained in the lecture. Uh, this is the percolate down. It starts by first of all deciding uh, which of the two children is the minimum. Because if you recall, in the percolate down, we are percolating a parent. The artificial parent that we just cut it from the last uh, leaf and put it at the root obviously is uh, likely to be not a small value because in the heap the small value should be at the top. Now we cut it the last value which should normally be big and put it at the root. So we have to calculate it down to reach its correct place. So the way you do that is you swap it with the smaller child. So how do we get the smaller child? We have to first of all uh, initially assume the, the left is the smaller, but you still have to compare it with the right. If the right is still smaller, then the right becomes the smaller child. So now compare the smaller child with your element that is at the root. Okay. So if it is, uh, if the uh, element is bigger then you now swap it with the smaller child okay and, and you repeat until either you reach a leaf node or uh, the element reaches its correct position this is basically what percolate down is doing okay so all this method we explain however there are a few things we have not explained in the lecture uh, for example here uh, we have actually more than one constructor we have two additional constructors here. So let's try to explain them briefly. This constructor assumes the user already has data in an array list. So instead of creating a new array list, we're going to receive the array list that the user will give us that contain data. And if you recall, if we already have all the data, then there is no need to insert it in a queue one by one. Instead, we can call the build heap button up method because that is even more efficient than inserting elements one by one. Okay, so if the user doesn't have any data, then we will call this constructor. It will create an empty heap, okay, an empty array list. And the assumption then is that the user is going to be calling the enqueue method to enqueue his data one by one. But if he already has data and the data is in an array list, then just assign that array list to our array list variable here, heap. So heap become list. And then convert that uh, array list into a heap by calling the 
built hip button up method. We already explained, of course, the built hip button up method. It just goes through uh, the elements starting from the last parent up until we reach zero. Each time calling, pack it down. So it will keep calling, pack it down uh, until the heap becomes, I mean, until the uh, array list becomes a heap. Okay. Uh, we explain this again uh, in detail in the lecture. If you still have doubt how to do, uh, how to construct a heap using the bottom up approach, uh, please study the lecture again. Okay. The last constructor here. It's saying, okay, what if the user has data, but it is not in an array list? It is in a normal array. Okay, so here we have an abnormal array called A. Again, no issue. First, copy all the data in this array to the, the array list here, and then convert it into a heap. So how do we copy the data? We use a loop for i from 0 to the length of A, get the element at i and add it to our heap so all the data will be added uh, at this point the data is not uh, rearranged to be a heap so call the build heap button off to convert the array list into a heap okay so these are the three different ways you can call the constructor of this class to create a heap uh, I think probably that is the only thing that is not explained in this class. Uh, we have the usual is empty method. It will return true if the size of the heap is zero. And of course, there is a two string method. Just calling the two string of the heap of the array list. Remember, heap is the array list. And that is it basically. All these uh, methods were already explained. Right. Now, the next thing is, um, if we go back to the document, it says we are also given a test class, test integer min heap. As usual, uh, normally we test each of our data structures to make sure it is, its methods are working as expected. So let us try to run this. Uh, uh, also, let's go through the code first, actually, then try to run it and see uh, how it works. So test integer min heap. Okay. So as usual, uh, we first create an object of the data structure we are testing. So here we are creating a min heap of integer heap equal to new min heap of integer. Uh, all right. Then uh, we display a menu to the user. Uh, noting that we have some variables here, option, n, and size, we'll see how they are used uh, through the code. But we will be running in a do while loop, display the menu, and the menu consists of create a heap, create a binary mini heap, top down. Okay, so top down means he will create an empty heap, and then the user has the chance to call the insert method, rather the NQ method, to NQ the elements, one by one. So just repeat it, NQ. Or create a mini heap button off. So this is to test the uh, the other constructors that are creating the heap button up, as well as testing the button up method. Then there is NQ uh, delete, which will dequeue the minimum. Those are the options basically, and Q and the Q. Um, so how are, how are these options handled? If he chooses option one, if the user chooses option one, uh, here it says enter the number of elements to insert into the binary heap. So we need a size from the user. So this is the use of the variable size that we saw above. And then, based on the element he said he's going to insert in a loop from 1 until that size, we say, okay, give me the next element, read the next element, and call the enqueue method to enqueue it.
Okay. Now, like we saw in the last uh, two laps, uh, BST as well as AVL, we had a nice class uh, that will print the the tree in a graphical form. The same thing here. We have another class called a hip printer. Okay, hip printer is part of the project, but you are not required to know how it is implemented. It's just there to to guide you to show you how the the hip is actually going to be uh, constructed. Okay, so after each NQ and also after each DQ, we shall call the uh, print method of the hip printer object to display the hip graphically. So no different than the way you used to call this uh, method in the previous lab. Just say hip printer, a new hip printer, and you pass it your hip, okay, and call the print method. The hip is the binary hip that we created earlier, okay. Okay, so it's the one we have just added an, a new element. Now display it to see the resulting tree. Okay, option two is similar. It is to help you build a hip button up. All right, so here, uh, before we create the hip, we need to first of all read all the data into an array. Okay, and then we call the second uh, constructor, uh, actually the third constructor, because we're using a normal array here. So let's go through it one by one. It says enter the number of elements to NQ. Uh, so we read the size from the user. And based on that, we create an array. So this is a normal array of integer of the size given by the user. Uh, you can see that array here. It was declared here an array of integer but not yet created because we don't know the size as we know in normal array we must know the size before we can create it so after receiving the size now create that array now read data from the user and save it in this array so in a loop for i from zero to the size enter the next element and read it and save it in the array so now we have all our data in an array now how do we use this data to construct a heap simply call the second rather the third constructor new mean heap and you pass your array and it will create a heap for you using the bottom up approach as we saw, the second and the third constructor, they are calling the bottom-up approach to actually construct the heap. So after the heap has been constructed, now print it. Okay. Uh, option three is just to enqueue. So whichever way you created your heap, whether the top-down or bottom-up, you can still add more elements. Okay. So here, I just ask the user to give you the element, read it, and enqueue it. Of course, after enqueue, display the tree again. And the last option is for the dequeue. Okay. So we check if the heap is not empty. If it is empty, we print an error message. Otherwise, we just say heap dot dequeue, and then print the updated tree. We could have captured the element that has been dequeued and printed, but there is no need. If you are going to print the resulting tree, we will see that the element has actually been deleted. Okay, so you can call the heap.dequeue like this. Even though it returns an element, we don't need the result. So no need to, to receive the result and print it or save it in a variable. Just call it as if it is void. It will do the dequeue. Our heap will have been updated, now print it. So this is very simple class just to test the methods of mini heap. Let us run it to see that it works as expected. Uh, I'm going to test this uh, a class using the elements given here. In the task, 
it asks you actually to manually build a mean heap using these values okay uh, in both approaches this is very important Shabab. we need to know how to do the building of a heap uh, manually using the two approaches so i normally in a in a normal situation i will ask students to take a paper and pencil in the lab before we begin anything to convert these numbers I mean to use these numbers to create a heap top down and bottom up manually because this is how what will come in an exam uh, okay so you should still do that shabab i really encourage you to learn how to build a heap uh, using the two approaches the examples are there in the lectures okay um, the good thing is the lectures are there now always so you can always uh, run them anytime that you have doubt so we're going to test our test integer i mean heap based on these values this is actually what the task here is saying after you have done it manually now run test integer mean heap to verify your solution okay so i have already started the the uh, the program and we're gonna try initially the um, the first option which is the one that will create a heap uh, top down so it will create an initially empty min heap and then we will insert the values one by one so let's say option one to create a heap uh, top down so it asks how many elements are we going to enqueue? Uh, the elements are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven elements. So initially only seven elements. So the elements are seven. And now it is asking us to enter the element one by one. Enter element number one. Okay. So 11 is the first element. Enter element number two. 8 is the next element obviously you can see 8 initially went to the left of 11 but because 8 was smaller and this is min heap it was percolated up okay so you can see 8 is now the new root not 11 okay the next element is 7 7 initially will come here to the right but again, it will be percolated up uh, to, to be swapped with 8. So 7 will be the new root actually. So 7, as you can see, 7 has moved up and 8 has come down. Okay. Next number is 4. So 4 will go to the left of 11. Remember how the heap grows. It is a complete tree. So this is the only place left of 11 that we can add a new element. But again, 4 is smaller than 11, so it will be swapped with 11. And also smaller than 7, so it will be swapped with 7. So 4 will eventually be here. Okay. Yeah, so this is exactly what we have. 4, 7, 11. The next element is 9. So 9 normally will go to the right of 7. This is how the tree will grow this time it is bigger than seven so it will stay where we put it no no percolate up this time okay and then the next number is six six will go to the left of eight but it will be percolated to be swapped with eight so it will go down six will come here but six will remain here because it is bigger than four okay so six yeah you can see six is here it has gone down the final element to NQ is 2. So initially 2 will be here, but it is smaller than 6, so 6 will come down and 2 will come here. And still 2 is smaller than 4, so 4 will come down and 2 will end up as our new root. Okay. So this is our heap, uh, exactly as we discussed in the lecture. Um, 
Now, before we test the uh, bottom-up approach, let us try the other option. Suppose now you enqueue uh, one. Okay, one uh, will initially come here to the left of eleven, but it's going to be percolated all the way to the top because it's smaller than eleven, smaller than seven, and smaller than two. So let's say option three to add an element, and it is one we want to enqueue. So this is a new tree you have. You can see one has propagated all the way to the top. And 2, 7, and 11 are swapped, are percolated down. So, uh, yeah. So this is uh, how you can, I mean, how the NQ method works. Uh, even though we created a, a heap with only uh, a limited number of elements initially, we can still NQ because we are using uh, array lists. The size can always be extended. No need to worry about the size. Okay, so I think we have seen enough of uh, insert. Okay, I should have called it NQ because that's the terminology with respect to Q, but it doesn't matter. How about DQ? Okay. If we say DQ, we should remember it is only the root that will be DQ'd. Okay, DQ, this is a Q. So DQ means remove the element at the front. And the element at the front here is 1. So in this case, 1 will be removed. But 11 will be copied and put in its place and deleted from here. Now 11 has to be percolated down. And percolating down will be swap. I mean, we will be swapping the element with the smaller child, so it will be swapped with two, and then with seven because seven is smaller than nine. So actually, the eleven will end up here, and the two will go to the top. Let's try that option four for the Q. Option four, the Q. You can see, as I just said, one has been removed. Now, let us try to call the Q again. This time, you will see something interesting. Because when we delete the Q, the change is not going to occur in the left subtree. Because the smaller child of 2 is actually 4. Okay, so when we copy 6 to the top, which is the last element, it is actually going to be... Uh, you know, swap with 4. So 4 will go up, 6 will be here. And since 6 is less than 8, it will remain here. Okay, so call the queue again, option 4. And that's what we have. So this is basically how to build a heap top down and how to test the NQ and the queue. I would like to run, uh, maybe I can delete. Uh, no, we can create a new heap uh, from the scratch, this time bottom up. So let's say option 2, just to test the bottom up approach. Okay, so here it says enter the number of elements. Again, the same number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 elements. Now this time it will not create a heap yet. It will put all the elements in an array. Uh, without making the array a heap, then it will call the, the, the third constructor, which will receive the array, as we saw uh, in the min heap class. The third constructor will receive an array. Okay, so copy the array into our heap, and then call the build uh, build heap bottom up method to convert the the array into a heap. Okay, so this time we will not see the stages of the development of the tree itself. It will just build it and then show us the final tree, which is what we uh, shall see. So if you go back uh, <coughs> to the uh, to the running here, <coughs> the element number one is 11. We will not see any output this time because the heap is not being created until we receive all the data. So next is 8, then 7, then 4, then 9, then 6, 
then 2. And now we see our hip, okay, straight away. Uh, you will see that it's going to be slightly, or it may be slightly different than the hip you get if you built it top down. Okay, so this is basically what uh, built hip top down means. So again, if you like, you can still enqueue some elements. Uh, for example, if we enqueue one, uh, one will be initially here, uh, and then it will be swap, two will come down, four will come down, and so on. So this is the new tree you get after enqueuing one. So this is basically the example. Um, so uh, let's go back to the document again and see the next example. Okay, so in addition to min heap and test integer min heap, we are given a class here called association. Okay, the association class is a comparable class. And the idea of it is that if you need to enqueue data into a heap based on some priority, but your data elements, the object that you're going to insert, they don't have the priority already built into their class. Then you can use the association class to assign the priority. Okay? And then, instead of putting your data object into the heap, you will be putting object of association. And maybe you will understand this better if I show you the class and also show you an example because we're going to use the association to associate uh, cities uh, based on their population. So population is the priority and then enqueue them in the, uh, in the heap. So let us look at the association class. It's like a wrapper class that allows you to convert an object uh, to have the priority <clears throat> Okay, we may need this in two ways one way is the object already has compare to <clears throat> Okay, but the compare to is not the one we want to use for the priority you want to assign a different compare to for the priority Then we need an association class Okay, the other uh, option is The object doesn't have doesn't implement compare to at all so we cannot enqueue it in the heap. Well, we can assign uh, a priority to it and make it comparable using the association class. Okay, so this is the association class. It's really a small class. It takes two, uh, two types. Okay, it's a generic class. Uh, so far, the generic class we have seen, they have just one type, T. But this time, we have actually two types okay it says public class association consisting of data type k which must be comparable okay it must be comparable and another data type v okay so we have two elements in our association association is a pair consisting of a key and a value the key must be comparable the value doesn't have to be uh, a, a, you know comparable okay it is the key that will that must have the, the comparable okay so uh, it implements comparable so we must have compared to and it's implementing the comparable of course based on association objects well, association object consists of a pair, key, and value. Okay, let us see how it works. So, as we said, it has two variables, key of type K. Remember, K is the data type that must be comparable. These are all generic types. You will specify the type when you are creating an instance of this class. Okay, and it has a value which doesn't have to be comparable any type will do okay the constructor will receive the two values 
the key and the value and it will use them to initialize these two instance variable okay in case we don't have the value okay then the value will be null the key however cannot be null okay because it is the identifying field in the association okay so if the user only gives the key then we will call the other constructor sending the key and null for the value okay then it has get methods so get key will return the key get value will return the value and it also has set value we cannot set key key is an identifying field okay it can only be assigned through the constructor but the user can change the value of the association object okay and then we have the equals method um, the equals is going to be based on the key of course similarly the compare to okay so compare to will receive another association object called that so we are comparing this and that okay and we are saying return the result of comparing this dot key against that dot key remember the keys they are comparable themselves <clears throat> so we are saying the compare to of the association will return the same result as compare to of the key in that association okay so we only need to compare the current key this dot get key if you wish you could have just said uh, this dot key okay because get key will actually return the same thing okay so compare the result or return the result of comparing key against that dot key or that dot get key okay uh, so the compare to of the association simply return the result of compare to of the key of the association all right and equals is doing similar okay uh, so equals you cannot change the signature so the argument here must be of type object so the first step is to convert it to association and then return true if uh, the current key equals other that get key but a better way to do it actually is to return the result of compare to if it is zero to ensure there is no discrepancy between uh, the result of compare to and equals okay the last method here is two string which will print or which will return this association object as a string basically it will return uh, a key and if the value is not null a, a value separated by comma also enclosed within brackets okay we will see that when we use the when we try to print an association object okay so this is the association class now how do we use it here i have an example called prioritize cities okay let me show you first of all uh, by the way i should have said at the beginning that uh, the documents for lab 9 are as usual they are on the blackboard just go and download this zip file from blackboard on zip it you will have the document as well as the project for lab 9 okay and while we are on the blackboard uh, perhaps I should point this to those who have not seen this yet uh, in the process of recording my lectures online I had to update the slides to make them more suitable uh, for uh, use in the recording of the lectures so the new version of the slides are now posted on blackboard uh, you can access them uh, from the same menu okay so um, yeah <clears throat> so what i was gonna say is once you zip that file uh, you will have the lab 9 project now inside the lab 9 project in addition to the source files there are two text files here there is a file called ksacts okay 
let's open it it basically consists of cities uh, in the kingdom okay uh, I obtained this a long time ago from Wikipedia uh, where they were trying to rank the cities in the kingdom based on their population so they said Riyadh is number one it has the highest population followed by Jeddah okay number two <clears throat> Followed by Makkah. Let's see how they write Makkah. They call it Mecca. Anyway, so <clears throat> this is our data file. What I want us to do is to create an object of association where we associate each city with its population or the rank in population. So the rank in the population is the key and the name of the city is the value so in other words the ranking here is going to be used as our priorities so the yard here will have priority number one okay so the idea is once we create association object using these data items and enqueue them in our queue and then we print the queue we print the heap we will see that Riyadh is going to be printed first because it has the highest priority followed by Jeddah and so on. This is the idea just to show you that you can associate priorities to elements even if they don't have that uh, value built into the data, into the object itself. So here you can think of this as priorities. We are assigning priorities to the name of cities. Okay, let us see the program that is using this file. It is called uh, Prioritize Cities. Okay, so the first thing we do is we create a mini heap, but this time it's not a mini heap of string. Because if you just use string, then the priority is the alphabetical listing of the string. No, we want the ranking in terms of population to be our priority. So because of that, we have to create a heap of association where we associate two data types. Integer, which is going to be our key, and string, which is going to be our value. So as I mentioned, these generic types uh, that we have in the association K and V. This is the point where you specify them. Okay, when you are creating the, uh, where is the class? When you are creating your min heap, we now have to say what does V mean? What does what does K means? Well, K stands for integer. What does V means? V stands for string in this case. Okay, so create a mini heap of association objects in which integer is the key and string is the value. Okay, then you are heap variable. New mini heap. Uh, if you wish, you can eliminate this actually. We don't have to repeat the type when we are creating the object. The type is already known from here. But you can repeat it if you wish. Okay, this is why we normally see this one in uh, in NetBeans. It says we are the, the arguments are redundant in the right hand side. So we create our heap. Now we define two variables: int priority and string city. Then, as we learned from last lab, we create a scanner object based on our text file so we're going to be reading data from our text file so we need to say scanner uh, scanner object equal to new scanner new file and then we give the name of the text file we're going to read the data in that file one line by line so we need while the file has next line read the next line now read the next int from the line from the uh, line okay 
so because we know the integer appear first in the file so next int and save your data in the variable priority Let's save your value in the variable priority then read the city uh, here I just say read next line to read the rest of that line and save it in the city so now that we have two values we can actually create association object and enqueue it in our heap so we say heap.enq new association of integer and string and give our values for the integer and the string priority and city this is how to create association object okay in addition to specifying the types you now have to give the value since you are creating an object so an association object will be created and enqueued okay keep doing that until we read all the lines close the file so at this point we have created our heap okay now how do we print the data in our heap in a sorted manner very easy simply do a loop as long as the heap is not empty dequeue the next element and print it and you will see that magically the element will be printed in a sorted manner because this NQ has ensured that when we when we receive a new element it's going to be calculated up to reach its correct place so at the time by the time we finish this NQ process we already have a valid queue so if we say the queue we are actually getting the front element based on the priority okay let's run this program and see uh, uh, let me make sure i close the file i think yes i close it okay so run uh, prioritize cities run file and you can see the output okay the brackets and the commas are based on our definition of what to string in the association okay and we can see key comma value key comma value and they are being printed based on the priorities so this is basically how to prioritize a list of elements using our mini heap okay if you want them to be printed based on uh, uh, i mean in, in reverse order uh, you will probably use a max heap so that uh, the one with the higher value will come first as i explained in the lecture so this is the second example um and actually this is the last example i already explained all the other classes uh, the heap printer is already explained uh, with the note here that you do not need to know how it is how it is implemented just how to use it okay so with these examples let's now talk about the tasks you need to do uh, we have already discussed task one which is manual just to get you used to creating a heap using the two methods now task two is asking you to add some methods to the main heap say so heap sort is an efficient sorting method that sorts element in an array using min heap how does it work first it uses the array to create a heap using the bottom-up approach because of course if we have data already no need to start enqueuing it one by one just call the bottom-up method or the second or third constructor to build your heap bottom-up okay so it creates uh, a heap using the data then it repeatedly dequeue the mean value and put it back in the same array okay so first the array is used to create a heap and now when we dequeue the first element actually is going to be the smallest so put it back in position zero dequeue the next element put it back in position one and so on by the time you put all the element back to the array the array will be sorted okay so this is the algorithm we want you to implement so here you receive an array 
assume that the array already has data okay all you have to do is use the content of the array to create a heap well you have a constructor that allow you to create a heap using an array the third constructor if you recall in the main heap okay this constructor receive an array and create a heap so all you have to say is min heap my heap equal to new min heap and you pass your array uh, to that const the constructor okay this you will do inside the method itself <clears throat> okay so inside this method you need to create a min heap using this array is min heap my heap equal to new min heap and you pass this array as parameter automatically you have a heap you don't have to do anything else it is already a heap now you need a loop to dequeue from the heap and put back in the same array okay the first element you dequeue put it in position zero next element put it in position one and that is it you are done the user after calling this method if he prints his array again he will see that the array is automatically sorted i hope this is clear so you have to implement this method to implement heap sort as i just described this is method number one that you should do uh, the second method is to write a method called decrease key decrease key so the create decrease key will receive an index i and a new value called key okay what it will do is it will replace the value at this index with the new value obviously when you do that the heap property may no longer hold may have been violated so after that you have to restore the heap property and basically you just need to do a percolate up okay uh, however there is some restriction here uh, yeah so it says after you enqueue the value you need to restore the heap property and i'm just giving you as a hint you just need to do percolate up to do that i'll show you what i mean in a moment but there, are, there is a note here uh, it's a note you need to check that the index i is valid so if you are here currently has only seven elements and you said increase element number 10 definitely there is no element number 10 so you should check that the index is valid before you proceed the second thing you have to check is that the key you are trying to uh, insert is actually smaller than the key already in the heap otherwise you are not decreasing you are probably increasing okay so these are the two checks you have to do before you proceed uh, now once you implement these two methods you are asked to update the test integer min heap uh, to test now just to explain more clearly what the decrease key is doing let us run the test uh, integer min heap again just to illustrate what you are expected, expected to do in the decrease key so run file okay uh, let's choose option 2 to build a heap button up and the elements are uh, enter the number of elements is 7 and the elements are 11 8 7 4 9 6 and 2 okay so this is our heap now the question says write a method decrease key okay that will receive an index and a new value so for example suppose i said my index is 0 1 2 3 4 5 my index is 5 i want it decrease the key number 5 to a new value 1 
okay so the value is one so we're gonna replace 11 with one but obviously this will violate the heap property because one is smaller than six therefore what you need to do after you replace your value is that you have to calculate it up and if you calculate it up as you can see one will end up here if it were uh, five it will still remain the same because five is less than six okay uh, so that's the idea of decrease key you pass an index and a new value to the method and the method will first replace the existing value at that index with the new value but that will probably violate the the, the heap property so you have to calculate up okay uh, another method we can do is increase a key okay so if we have a method increase key uh, for example we change 2 to 20 in that case we have to do calculate down so these are the common method that can be added to a binary heap okay let's go back to our document um, so that is basically about task 2 now task 3 is asking you to do something very similar to what we did with uh, prioritize cities this time we are asked to prioritize students so we are given a file here called student.txt okay the student has data similar to the student information we are, we are used to id gpa and name okay so if you are reading this file you can say next int next double and next line to read the rest of the uh, information as a name okay next int next double next line while the the file is not uh, empty well there are more lines read next int next double next line so this is how to read it okay so what are we supposed to do with this file it says uh, the file student.txt contains data records of students consisting of their IDs, their GPAs, and the name in this order, as we just saw. Write a program called prioritize students.java that uses minheap to print the students based on their GPA. Okay, our student class the uh, identifying field there was the id number so we cannot rely on the compare to of the student class we have to use association to associate a student object with gpa so you're going to create association objects in which the key is the gpa of the student and the value is the student object itself complete with the gpa don't worry if the gpa is repeated uh, first as a key and also as a value for the student itself no problem the first value is just going to be used for priority okay so we want to print the student based on their gpa uh, uh, starting with those with the with the smallest gpa all right so you just uh, create this association association objects in queue in the heap and print the heap uh, basically you're going to be dequeuing and printing the queue as until the queue becomes empty okay there are a few notes here it says since id number is the ordering field for the student class you need to use the association class to make gpa as the priority this is what i have just explained so you're going to use gpa as the key and the student object itself as the value the student object will have the GPA also, but no problem. Okay. Two, uh, after you dequeue each association object, you don't need to print the whole association object because otherwise you will see GPA repeated. First as a key and second as a value of the student object. No, you only need to print the, the value of the association object that is, is dequeued so that we only see the list of students. Okay this is task three uh, the final task is asking you to implement max heap okay so most of the tasks we have seen so far 
uh, tasks that allow you to, to know how to use uh, HIP. Now implement one yourself. You have been given I mean HIP. Now implement Max HIP and test it by creating a test class called Test Integer Max HIP. Okay, you can repeat task two for your max hip let it also have the uh, the decrease key method uh, actually here i'm asking for increase key method okay similar to decrease key um, um, and also hip sort if you wish you can add the hip sort as well okay so these are the tasks for this week again you have uh, as usual until midnight of Saturday uh, to complete it. Thank you very much.